There's something extremely satisfying about taking random objects and making them look soft and fuzzy. Normally, people would do this with the particle system, but thanks to some new geometry node features in Blender 3.4, we can get better results that render way faster. First step is finding a model to cover in fuzz. I'm using this fish that I modeled because when I think of soft and cuddly animals, a uh, fish comes to mind. You can download the same one from Sketchfab if you'd like, but you can use whatever you want. Not everything looks appealing when you add little hairs to it though. Stick around to the end to see how I made this one. Now let's open up Blender 3.4, import the model, go over to geometry nodes and add a new node tree. First thing to do in here is add in a distribute points on faces node. And I want our original geometry to be there. So I'll just duplicate this and bring in a join geometry right here. And you can just plug this in. Now we can turn this density up however high we want. And basically what we're going to do is instance a bunch of curves onto all of these points. So we have to make some curves now. The texture you end up with has mostly to do with the shape of your curves, and you can get some really different results just by changing them a little. I'm going to reference this piece of fleece that I have and try to match the shape of the fibers. I'll come over to the outliner and hit C to create a new collection. We can just name this something like fuzz. Let's hide our fish for now and add in a curve. So this is going to be our first hair, and if you want, you can make these with geometry nodes too, but I think it's actually a lot easier to just draw them. So we can tab into edit mode, hit T to open up the side panel right here, and you can go over to this draw tool like that. And we can leave this set to cursor, which means it's going to use the cursor in the middle for the depth. Now we can delete this and just start drawing a hair. So this first one I'll make about a meter long, just start from the bottom and go to the top. And this is a pretty smooth curve. This is gonna be our long hair. So we can drag that over, shift D to duplicate and bring it back to the middle. This next one, I want to be a little shorter and a little more squiggly. So I'll do like about half the length. Now this one, I want to be like a loose pill. So I'll just do a few squiggly shapes like this. And notice when I'm doing this, I'm always making sure that the origin point is at the very bottom right there. Now, if we look at this from a different angle, you can see that this one is very flat. So an easy way to fix that is to go back into edit mode and just select the end right here. You can go up to proportional editing and turn this on. And I also want to turn on connected only. Now we can just rotate it on the Z axis like this. And if you want it to influence more of the curve, you can just use the scroll wheel like that. And now I can make it a little more three dimensional. I'll duplicate it and we'll make one more. And this will be a similar shape, but a lot tighter. So I'll just do a lot more squigglies. And again, I'll select just the end and then rotate it on the Z. Make sure you're using proportional editing. All right, so these are the four we're going to use. And notice that when I select them over here in the outliner, they're all in order. So one, two, three, four, like that. This is going to come in handy later. We can just hide the collection now and bring back our fish and go back over to geometry nodes. Let's bring in an instance on points node. And for the instance, we want to use the whole collection. So we can just drag it from our outliner and plug it in. Now this is going to look weird at first because what we want to do is separate the children and reset their location. And I also only want to choose one of these so we can choose pick instance like that. And right now this is basically just alternating each different curve that we drew. I only want to use the first one, which is the long one. So that's what we can use this instance index for. You can just drag it out and search for integer. And now this will choose the first one in the collection and we can choose whatever one we want. So it starts with zero. So the last one would be three, but we can leave this set to zero to make these stick out in the normal direction. You can drag the rotation over to the rotation of the instance on points and they'll stick straight out like that. Or at the very beginning, you can capture the normal and I'm just going to store it in an attribute with a name and I'll just call it OG norm for original normal. Now we can bring this attribute back over here. To search for it. Use an align Euler to vector. Make sure this is plugged into the vector. Also change this to Z and then we can plug that into the rotation. This will come in handy later when we animate our model. Okay, so the scale should definitely be quite a bit smaller right here. So basically I want to reuse this for each of our hairs and we have four of them. So to make this easier to reuse, we're actually going to group all of these together. So let's organize all the options that we want to use. I want to control the density so I'll bring a value node over here for that, plug it into the density. We have the integer for our index. I'll make another one for the seed right here so we can randomize that. I want a little more control over the density, so I'll add a math node set to multiply and drop that in right here. And we can make a second value node for the multiply, and I'll just set that to one by default. 
and I also want to control the scale. So one more value right here, and I'll just set it to like 0.1 and drag it over here. And I also want the collection on the outside. So now that we have all of the options we want, we can just select all of this and hit control G to group it. And if you want to change what any of these options are called or their order, you can do that on the side right here. Just hit N and go over to group. These two are still called value, so I'll name one of them density and the other one density multiplier. Now I can get rid of the ones over here that I don't think we're going to need. This is mostly just to make it easier to set up. Now let's duplicate this node group so that we have four of them, one for each of our hairs. And instead of hitting shift D, you can hit control shift D and that will duplicate it with all of the connections over here still plugged in. So let's just make four of these and I want to join them together. We can just plug all of them in like this. And then we just have to change the seed and the index for each one. So this one will be one, this one will be two, and the last one will be three. Now, if we want, we can control the density of each one independently like this. And I have this value over here, just controlling the density of all of them at the same time. Right now, these have no thickness to them. So we can add some thickness after the join geometry with a curve to mesh node and we can plug a circle into the profile curve. I like to set the resolution to three to start, which is the lowest resolution. And the radius is way too big right now, so we can set this to something a lot smaller, like 0 0.01. And I also want the tip of each of these to get pointier. So we can do that with a set curve radius node, and we'll use a spline parameter, and we can plug the factor into the radius. Now these are all going to be flipped backwards. You can see it's like thin at the, the wrong end. So we can flip that around a few different ways. The way that I like to do it is with a math node set to subtract, and we can just subtract the factor from one. So the first one should be one. You can plug the factor into the second one, and then we can plug it back in. If any of them still look backwards, you can go over to your curves and in edit mode, just select everything, right click and choose switch direction, and then they'll flip around. Let's add some randomness now. So we can do that after the join geometry right here. And we're working with instances. All of these are instances. So we can add some random rotation with a rotate instances node right here. And we can just plug a random value into the rotation. So I'll drag this out and search for random. And we have a random value right here. So I'll set the X and the Y to something like 0.3 and the Z I'll set to pi. And for the minimum, I'll do the same values, but negative. And I also want to add some random scale so we can bring in a scale instances node and do the same thing. Another random value node, except I'll set this to float and we can just plug that into the scale. And I want our minimum scale to be something a little bigger, maybe like 0.3. I want the long hairs to not appear as often, so we can change the density multiplier to something way smaller, like 0 0.005. If we turn our density up really high, it'll start to get pretty slow. So I wanna make the value for the viewport and for the render different, and we can do that pretty easily. You can use a node that's called isViewport and a switch node. Make sure the switch is set to float and we can plug the is viewport into the switch right there. Now the viewport value will be true and when it renders it will use the false value right here. So I'll just type 100 and we can replace this value. We can just delete it and add this one in like that. So let's set our render value to something way higher. So instead of 100 we'll do like 100,000. Now let's see how it's looking in the render. It's looking pretty good. Now let's add some color to it. So to get started, at the end, we should add a set material and set it to whatever our fish is using right here. So we can do that. Now we can go over to the shading tab. And there are a few things we need to do in here. First of all, notice that our fish is using this image texture and it's UV unwrapped. This is going to be a lot easier if you're using UV maps. So let's bring in an attribute node and we want to use the same UV map. So you can just hover over this, hit control C and then hover over this and hit control V. Basically, you want to use the name of the UV map that your model is using, whatever is in here. You can see that we have two and the one that this is using is called UV map. And we also want to change this from geometry to instancer. And this is the new feature in 3.4 It's that we have more attributes that we can use with our instances. Now, if we use the vector from this, 
you can see that our instances have the right color, but it turns our model gray. So we basically need to mix these two UV maps right here. Luckily, we can use the alpha right here from our attribute, and that will give us a different value for things that are instances and things that are not. So we can bring in a mix node right here and make sure this is set to vector, and we can plug the alpha into the factor. So the instances are showing as white. That means that we should plug our vector into this slot right here, the second slot, and our normal UV map into the first one. And we can plug this into our vector. And as soon as we do that, our colors should match. One issue is that when you're using this on something that deforms like an animated character, some of the particles will flicker in and out like this. First, we need to capture our original position, unwrap our mesh, and then after all of the points are scattered, we can set our model to its original position. It takes a little longer to load when you do this, but it fixed the flickering problem for me. If somebody knows of a better way to do this, then leave a comment below. You can make this easier to reuse for multiple objects by duplicating this group input and using the empty slots to plug into values that you know you're going to want to reuse. And you can rename some of these options in the side panel by hitting N. And then you'll be able to control things more easily from the side panel without going into the nodes. Let's try adding some fuzz to a more complex model. I found this sculpture for free from 3, 3D Scan from 3dscans.com, and it doesn't have a texture, so I'm going to make a simple one from scratch. So I'll just import that model in as an OBJ. And this is huge right now, so let's just scale this down until it's, you know, a more manageable size. And when it looks good, hit Control A and apply all transforms. Now we can select it and add a geometry nodes modifier and just add in the node tree that we made. Now we can just, you know, turn the scale up and add as many particles as we want in here. In the shading tab, I'll make a simple material with a noise texture. And we're going to use the object texture coordinate. You can plug that into the vector. And I'm going to plug the color of the noise into our base texture. And now we'll get some rainbow colors in here. If we want our fuzz to inherit this color, we can use an object info node and use the location instead like this. If you want to use both of these at the same time, you can do that the same way that we did before using an attribute node. Even though you're not using it, you can bring in the UV map and set it to instancer. And we just want it basically for the alpha right here so we can switch between them. Set the render resolution to whatever we want, hit render, and this is what we got. If you want to download the file from this video, you can get it on Patreon, along with early access videos and coupons for free products. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.